scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. That every believer must submit himself or herself to the ministry of prayer. That gentleman you are taking back, just turn him for me. My friend, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let that be the end of captivity in your life. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to pray. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to pray. Please hear me. The times that we live in are not times of pray for me. You must obtain grace from God to pray. There are times that Joshua Selman will not be there when the gates stand. You must master the art of prayer in its entirety. I did teach you in part one of this series that prayer has four principal assignments in the life of the believer. I don't want to go into it, but um, you have to go back and listen very carefully and understand the dimensions of prayer let me do a quick recap number one that the first assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation when we engage in the ministry of prayer it supplies the strength for growth and transformation number two an avenue to make petitions and requests the second assignment of prayer is that it provides an avenue to make petitions and requests the bible says that our requests be made known philippians 4 and verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing king james says careful but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god the third assignment of prayer as revealed in scripture is for spiritual legislation that means we create possibilities we create realities the bible says where the word of a king is there is power i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound we can create realities and possibilities through the power of prayer and finally the fourth dimension of prayer as revealed in scripture is for warfare and intercession to be able to ward off the arsenals of darkness that fight against our lives and our destinies. You must learn to pray. Key number two, and that's where we left off. I'll take it from there. The second key, if you want to contend for mastery, if you want your life to rise to a higher level of spiritual excellence, is understanding and engaging the laws and principles of the kingdom. This is a long one understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom the first key being prayer if you intend to strive for mastery the second key is that you must understand and engage two very important words you can understand and fail to engage you will still not get results you need to understand then obtain grace to engage the laws, L-A-W-S, and principles of the kingdom. In Luke chapter 11 and verse 52, Luke 11, 
52 it says woe unto you lawyers jesus is angry now for ye have taken away the key of knowledge the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourself and them that were entering you hindered hallelujah when it has to do with seeing the glory of god revealed in the life of a believer please pay attention there is always a part that you have to play we have emphasized this and i will continue to drum it in this house that every kind of faith work or christian practice that makes the outcome of your life absolutely dependent on god without any participation or partnership on your own part and from your own end is inaccurate is incomplete when it has to do with your life and destiny it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 moses told the people that this is what the lord had commanded that ye should do he says and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you you want to see the appearance of the glory don't just wish for the glory there are things to do hallelujah in exodus chapter 33 moses made two requests unfortunately the body of christ only pays attention to one exodus 33 the first request was in verse 13 exodus 33 and verse 13 the first prayer request that moses made was to know the ways of god i pray thee if i have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way that i may know you that was the first prayer then the second prayer five verses later verse 18 he's now requesting moses now in verse 18 i beseech you show me your glory so there is a relationship between his ways and his glory don't just ask for his glory you must know his ways are we learning so discussing the laws my apologies we'll continue discussing the laws that we have I gave us one law from last the last time part one and I think that's where we end the law of the sacrifice of total surrender still remember okay write it down in case you didn't get it that time we're dealing with laws now in fact you can call them laws of dominion that's under part two now so part one you can call it the foundation part two striving for mastery in bracket or under the laws of dominion the first law that i gave us in part one uh, is the sacrifice of total me technical praise god My apologies thank you so the sacrifice of total surrender second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians chapter 5 and we'll look at verse 14 and 15. it says for the love of christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So that Jesus died for you, and in his mind, he believed that if you acknowledge or you recognize the depth of sacrifice he made for you, it will no longer be an inconvenience for you to also respond thus to him. You get what the scripture is saying now? that in his mind and in his thinking he gave everything for you first because he loved you but then in hope that if you really understand the extent of his sacrifice you would also be able to make whatever sacrifice it takes the sacrifice of total surrender most believers want to gain mastery they want to command power with god they want to excel at extraordinary levels but they violate this first law 
the first law of dominion as far as gaining mastery is concerned is absolute surrender not just what you do who you are you must assume a state and a posture in the spirit where your life is completely surrendered i think i've said it in this house that um when you come forward to what we call giving your life to christ in 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 reality you are not giving your life to christ when you come forward to be saved you are receiving his life are we together because there's something wrong with that life that's why you are coming for another one are we together so when you really come to christ you are not necessarily we just say it and we understand what we are saying but from a theological standpoint now the the person about to be saved is not giving his life to christ he's receiving the life of christ giving your life to christ is an activity of surrender that prepares you for service the bible now demands that you give your life to christ if and when you are prepared to be used by god so giving your life to christ is an activity for mature believers who desire to be greatly used by god let me assure you two of you can be believers in the same church in the same place but the possibilities that you command among many factors would depend on the degree to which you are surrendered you will never be able to receive the same kind of result with a believer who is yielded and surrendered if and when you are not you can call the same name of jesus you can read the same bible is the realm of the spirit that will tell you the difference paul i know surrendered jesus i know surrendered sons of skiva who are you hallelujah the law of total surrender stems from the understanding that all that i am and all that i have belong to him and that i must lose the ability to tell him no what well, this these are the details that are captured when you are dealing with the subject of surrender that any believer who has not lost the ability to tell god no is not truly yielded you must consciously as an act of your will lose the ability to tell him no total obedience if he says to go left you go left if he says to go right now you go right you see that trusting that the one who is giving you that instruction is not out to destroy you so you can even blindly follow him knowing that the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end most believers are not yielded they come to god negotiating everything at their terms they want the power of god at their terms they want victory at their terms they want an excelling life a life of dominion at their terms when you come to him you die to self i taught you that there are two things you must overcome to be great in life one is sin the second is self if you are free from sin and you are not free from self you will still suffer you must be free from sin and free from self write it down don't forget that unbelievers have two problems sin and self believers have the problem of self and let me tell you this with one confession of truth the issue of sin is done by faith but it does not take one confession to deal with self when it has to do with self it is i die daily is someone learning now yes sin there's nothing you can do about it. it it takes god to forgive you and cleanse you the bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins it assures us that god is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness but when it has to do with self you die daily because there are many versions of that self you will not see now until you rise to a particular level so you die level by level you can think you are dead until promotion comes you can think you are dead until trouble comes hallelujah everybody say the sacrifice of total surrender so we took our time to pray 
just laying everything down let me tell you this when you surrender everything to god therein lies true liberty in the spirit taking his place to maintain your life and maintain everything around your life would destroy you you don't have that capacity i believe that most medical conditions especially that which is related to the mind come from men and women who are trying to do the job of the holy spirit in their own lives can i tell you it is burdensome to try to take the place of god in your life you don't know how many things he does if you try to step into that shoes it's too big eternity will not even afford you the opportunity to fill that space so hand over everything in your life to him my life is yours everything the children you gave me they are yours the husband you gave me he is yours the wife you gave me she's yours the job you gave me it belongs to you you see that way you save yourself the burden of ownership and now the burden of stewardship is the one you can handle you cannot handle the burden of an owner because whoever owns is the one who sees to it that that process or that thing continues to remain you don't have the power to make anything remain you can only maintain what you are given hallelujah our world is full of people who continue to plunge into depression and stress because in their thinking they believe that by worrying they can add one cubit to their hair and jesus took a whole chapter to talk about the burden of worrying he said consider the lilies of the field consider the birds they violate a major spiritual law they do not sow and they do not reap yet your heavenly father talks about solomon not even at dawn like the lilies the birds of the air may the lord help us to live truly surrendered lives many of you have given god everything except your finances god can touch your heart touch your praise and worship touch everything that's fine but once he comes near your wallet comes near your bank you tell him go away you don't know anything about finances i was trained and he says okay that's fine let me tell you anything you drive god from you automatically invited satan into it anything you drive god from your family and say god when you were in church i will give you your own place but now at home satan says thank you i've been looking for an opportunity to come the absence of god is automatically the presence of evil there are a few times in the bible where satan was invited he's a master at budging into lives and destinies are we together surrender is a very powerful secret powerful kingdom secret now let's hurry up the second spiritual law will start from there now i may not have the time to do all the teachings because i've taught some of them there are just a few things that i want to achieve and then we'll hopefully have the time to pray please open up your heart to learn i beseech you in the name of jesus christ and let me tell you this I, I don't mean to insult your pedigree but i i submit to you by the privilege of god's mercy that if you pay attention to the things that i teach you week in week out i give you a guarantee by the integrity of god your life will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder you may not look no 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 don't say amen it's a commitment i'm it's a burden a responsibility that you have to amen for the grace yes you have it but you must be committed to listen hallelujah the truths that i share with you number one they are not my ideas an invention of my mind that would be evil and wicked number two they are not vain babblings and philosophies of men believe me the truths that i share with you number one they are scriptural number two they are time tested principles from scripture and in the life of uncommon mentors and successful people across the globe you can rest in the fact that the spiritual menu you are receiving is not that which will destroy you but it is up to you to open up your heart to receive holistically 
don't just cherry pick what you think is relevant you see your own assignment is not to tamper with the equation trust the one who has led me to prepare that spiritual meal and take it holistically most believers sadly especially those who do not yet have results or notable results are usually the ones who tamper with the equations they are given are we together yes so your heart must be open we're not the first to succeed we're not the first to rise we're not the first to intend to do something that brings glory to the name of the lord many have gone before us there are still others before us and the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise law number two the law of mental transformation let's hurry up now i'll just touch on them very briefly and then we pray whoever told you that your mind does not have a role to play as far as gaining mastery is concerned i shared with you my own experience that probably based on my background and my the level of spiritual exposures at that time we were not really taught when i began with god the emphasis was the health of your spirit man and i think it should be so in that order are we together when you begin your spiritual pursuit the emphasis should be the health of your spirit man not just philosophies and laws in fact encounters we started with encounters our press towards god our need for the holy spirit and that remains a viable formula till today anybody i want to introduce to spiritual things i'm not going to start teaching them about money fame no no no, no. in that order you have to start with god remember the formula i taught us here in the beginning god it always starts with god not principles encounters first but then when we got to a point where we needed to add other facets to it i didn't have that opportunity but i bless god for the privilege of men like dr miles monroe when i began to study their material and study the material of other people i found out that my mental development and the quality of my thinking and my mindset had everything to do with the overall journey to an excelling life unlike the narrative we had been given at that time that if you were doing well spiritually don't worry about what happens in your mind the holy ghost will magically correct everything as you go and there are still people who believe that fallacy till today that just because you are pressing into God spiritually, it means automatically your mind will find a way of transforming itself. No. That's not accurate. Even if it's a thought that comes from well-intentioned people, you have a responsibility to work with God and understand that your mental construct has everything to do with the kind and the quality of life that you live i think it was um, bill johnson who wrote a very powerful book many years ago the supernatural power of a transformed mind and it's a book that is worth reading even till today hallelujah proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 the bible tells us that as a man thinketh in his heart interchange for mind he said so is he i spend a lot of time dealing when 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 i have the privilege of mentoring people or talking to them my primary focus is helping and guiding their spiritual lives but when we're able to achieve that the next part of call becomes to invest time and energy and quality information in reconstructing their belief systems i've taught you in this house that most of us derive our thinking and our mindsets from culture primarily the cultural experiences that we've had are shapers of our understanding the way we view life a product of culture number two our experiences past and present we've experienced all kinds of things especially negative things and they can build destructive memories are we, con are, we, are we together and those destructive memories can affect us when god is saying this your mindset in partnership with your history is telling you this cannot happen in your life 
we build our mindsets from our associations our associations friends relatives the implication of friendship is that subconsciously when you bring people um, close to your life what you are saying is that you are submitting yourself to their own ideologies too are we together I've taught you that if there are five wise people in your life you didn't count well there are actually six you being the sixth and respectfully speaking if there are five foolish people in your life you also didn't count well there are actually how many if there are five prosperous people in your life your closest circle of friends there are six prosperous people if there are five defeated mediocres flattering themselves competing with one another prepared or not you must know that you are also part of that competition he that walks with the wise the bible says shall be wise himself it says but the companion of fools shall be destroyed so we derive our mindsets medical science teaches us that children at birth or humans are programmed in two ways number one is genetic programming as it comes from their parents but the second and more important programming is called environmental programming are we together when man fell the first question the lord asked him when he said where are you he said i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked next question who told you you have submitted your ears and your influence to another entity the failure that you have embraced in your life came as a result of a programming there are many people today listen i have seen so many people tongue talking people and sometimes anointed men and women of god and sometimes when they see me do the things that god does through me you know the, most of them will rejoice but believe me they do not know that there is an ancient stumbling block resident within their minds that makes them believe that it's impossible for god to use you that far hallelujah there are people today, the limitation to your exploits in the spirit and even towards gaining mastery has nothing to do with a demonic attack. All the spirits have been driven, yet you are still failing. You know why? Because there is a stumbling block. There is something that has been programmed in your mind that you can't go this far. But by this teaching in the name of Jesus, that stumbling block, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let that stumbling block depart from you now when i began my walk with god my life was full of visions and i submit to you some of them have seen them happen already some are still on the way happening and others are yet to come but when i saw some of these visions you can imagine at that level starting naive in spiritual things on many grounds and seeing god show me all of these things it was up to me now to believe god can you do this with me to the nations across the globe thank god for the mentorship of great men like dr miles munro who challenged me and made me know that it is possible i told you ambitiously i wrote a letter to several men of god when i was starting in nigeria across africa I took that step of faith. I can't even remember what I wrote. I just wrote and told all of them, God called me. What do they have to say? How can you guide me? And to my greatest shock, I was called at the post office that there was one reply waiting for me. And I went there and opened that letter. And this was Dr. Miles Munro. Wrote it handwritten. And was encouraging me and said listen as at then he said i have the largest church in bahamas by the grace of god and still i am relevant in the political space i am advisor to many presidents i have written books with many bestsellers never never limit yourself and i said this is it as simple as what i'm telling you is there are some of you seated here you have robbed us of the books that we should be reading you have robbed us of the help them please somebody is already falling under the anointing there i'm just sensing impartations oh this night we're on a journey this night too in the name of jesus 
books some of you businesses some of you even ministries listen never never downplay the extent of limitation that a poor or faulty mindset can bring to your destiny don't you think demons are the only things that stop you from going forward mindsets there are times demons don't need to do anything when they find a mindset as large as them there they will go back because the same thing will happen to you hallelujah and please look at me we who are privileged to be in this side of the continent and this nation subliminally we have been programmed as individuals and as a people to put limitations on our life our history itself naturally comes with propositions of limitations i'm not talking of being blindly ambitious i'm talking of being full of confidence knowing this that he that cometh from above is above all the lord began to bring several layers of deliverance to my life number one was deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 you hear me read it often that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day that the lord will set joshua selman on high above how many nations believe me when i saw all nations i believed it by the way this whole revelation was in one room all nations i believe when i started seeing visions i will never forget i was in port harcourt in 2007 attending to a dear lady then who was sick she would later pass on and you know part of the people that were staying with in port harcourt and i remember the teaching hospital there it was my turn to attend them you know as a man of god and i suddenly looked outside from that bed space and i was open to a vision i saw 37 flags and that was the international headquarters of koinonia i saw it there i wrote it down i said lord i believe it we are going there can i tell you this please look at me for some of you nothing good has come to your life because your mindset has commanded every good thing to return every good thing to the extent that if people favor you you don't believe it because your mindset has been so deconstructed it is against the laws of your life for some can something be that easy there are many of you here who intellectually speaking you are about the brightest and the finest yet you have fallen into this deception of satan that you are good for nothing apostle i think i'm good for nothing if i ask you why you'll say i don't speak very well uh, my english is this and that give me another reason i come from the village you will say my grandmother is in the village my grandfather is in the village i was born and bred in the village drinking well water what has that got to do with a glorious destiny can i tell you you can choose to be in egypt and yet be thinking canaan in fact you have to think canaan to go to canaan right from when i was in one room i stand by the god of heaven i believed everything god told me i'm not just speaking in terms of finances and all of that no i believed it that one day i will speak to kings and i will speak to nations i believed it jeremiah 1 5 say not that i am a child but to whoever i send you to verse 6 you see Jeremiah cried and said, I cannot speak for I am a child. Verse 7, he rebuked him and he said, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and, whos and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. For someone, God is speaking to you here, that he's lifting you, not just spiritually. I hope you understand the concept of kingdom advance now. When we teach like this, we are not just talking pulpit. For some of you, God has told you he's taking you to UN you and when you think about it you just laugh at yourself and say me i came to challenge that devil every mindset that will not let you rise 
ill speakings of men that kept putting you down i curse it right now in the name of jesus let's sit down unfortunately sadly but unfortunately many of us probably came from families where it was a norm to speak words of discouragement I remember a particular person many years ago who cried he got an award and when he called his parents the parents said he should go and return it to the rightful owner he got an award true story return it to who because the father said no this this is my stupid and useless son it's impossible to have that award there's a gentleman i think he's here in koinonia um, I, I usually minimize talking about things like this because eventually it's, it, we're, we're talking to the whole globe, but it's something that is very good. The gentleman came and met me, I think a, a month or two in school of ministry, and he had designed a drone, a very intelligent, a drone system that will be such a blessing, you know, to several people and several parastatos across this nation. And he had designed also something like the engine of a vehicle or something like that. I looked at him and I held his hand. I said, my dear one, listen to me. No matter what happens, let me give you two confessions. One, it's going to be difficult to rise to the top. Go and read my, listen to my message, this grace called favor. Because in Nigeria, you need favor, not just skill to rise number two i told him no matter what happens don't give up on your dreams how many times have you seen people who produce results that were far less than you know what you know you could do and yet you are forced to clap for them because their mindsets were more superior than yours not because they had a better idea because of the color of your skin because of your sociological context you can allow, allow life to reduce you to a point where many of us call ourselves grasshoppers they limited themselves god never called them grasshoppers satan never called them grasshoppers they called themselves grasshoppers it's a popular story many men of god have given this story of an eagle an eaglet now they call it huh that was around with birds chickens because the eagle didn't have her mother to help mentor her and let her know that look you are meant for the skies and the hills and he was around with the chickens all the time eating and feeding like the chickens and then one time he saw the mother eagle just flying and soaring around and noticed that look my 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 design is similar to that one flying not this one's there and that the eaglet just tried to take a step of faith and found out that she was flying sometimes let me tell you this one of the way god delivers you listen let me tell you how god delivers men from negative mindsets he would take you out of the environment that caused it for a long time is is a system of quarantine he would take you away from the naysayers and the negative circles many of you right now if you want to do something good the moment you see your classmates or the moment you see people who used to know you they will laugh at you and say even you so god will take you to a place where nobody knows you you now see the reason why it he said kill everybody in jericho only one woman left rahab do you know why because her job there was a prostitute and god was about to change her life if there was one person who knew her history he would be the person who would stop her later on destroy everybody i'm about to give this woman a new beginning so that they don't see her and tell the future husband that this one you don't know who this one is i was her customer so sometimes hear me i'm speaking prophetically to some of you because there are some of you for god to help you he will have to take you out of that environment that negative environment where you keep receiving ill speakings and quarantine you in a spiritual environment like this where you keep hearing faith filled words six months under this kind of atmosphere and all that is left in your destiny is fire burns every mediocrity out of your life when the lord sent me to abuja i've told you at the risk of sounding proud forgive me if i do or you think i do is to the glory of god 
when i was coming and you know i've heard a lot of things about ministry in abuja and, and with all due respect and honor to all who serve the lord you know faithfully in this city when i came i looked at the place and i was praying and the holy spirit told me to go and buy the map and i i asked them to get me the map of abuja i looked at it and i looked at everything in the midst of my prayer now i said this respectfully not not to communicate pride the city became small literally it just became small you know like you are standing and you are looking at children playing and i said no come on this is how do you think god is going to send you to the nations with this mindset how do you arrive at another man's land and yet do what god says you should do dear businessman how do you think your conglomerate will go so far what guarantee do you have that people will be interested in you they limited god by saying they limited God by saying. Some of you from your background, you have never seen sufficiency. Even if the school fees is 2,000, mama will bring one five. The brother will bring this. They will now beg, you know, you've not seen. So when God speaks to you and say, you, it will get to a point where you will be given to nations. It's difficult for you to conceive it. But I'm here to speak to someone no matter what your mindset is saying now what god says about you must remain yeah. hallelujah Paraduskiata. let me encourage you see there is no need living a fake life don't fake what can be real don't have a a a, a low level thinking and then you cover it with good clothes cover it with good shoes cover it with a borrowed car leave all those things your first assignment after your encounter with the holy spirit is to walk on your mind from where thou art lift your eyes your legs may not go there but your eyes can go listen do you know why i'm speaking to you now about this there are some of you as this service is ongoing the holy spirit is reminding you remember what i told you in 2013 by now we would have been working in it but your fear your fear of this you can't i said start the company you've not even registered it till now i told you i will use you mightily you said you are a stammerer i brought aaron to you you still said aaron is not intelligent what do you want There is nothing you cannot do. This is what I believe. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. And you're not about to stop. hear me listen to me you may trek after service to go back home trek with honor while your mind is buying the cars there may be five members in the church now don't worry you don't need to fake figures and live a fake life is unnecessary while you are there let your mindset be in that crusade ground winning souls in their multitudes for jesus dear esther you may be in Shushan, but let your mind be in the palace. Dear Joseph, you may be in prison, but let your mind sit you on the throne. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. There are many of you who do not have the mental strength to survive the seasons of small beginnings your minds are too fragile your obsession for endorsement and reaffirmation will not allow you to move through the tides of negative speaking till you become a champion nobody claps for you when you are starting they only clap for champions you are going to move while people speak you are going to move while people gossip you are going to move while people prophesy and say watch nothing will happen the stamina comes from your spirit but is reflected through your mind mental strength hmm. 
that if somebody tells you i hope you know you will fail tell them be patient i will answer you five years later and you have that stamina listen unfortunately today we live in a social media world where people are under so much obsession to be right nobody wants to ah, no champions are not like that they are focused and determined the smoke that rises from the celebration of your result is an answer to the naysayers you just keep moving apostle i never saw my father build a house right now i'm 41 i'm 45 is there hope for me it is not lack of cement or blocks or concrete i assure you the house has not been built here you have received a speaking that i am in abuja and we are here to manage we are here to live defeated lives do you know there are people who it is not the government that has stratified them they stratified themselves as soon as they stepped into Abuja, even if they have 100,000 in their account and they are late to take a boat or Uber, they will feel guilty. They'll say, no, no, no. You know what? We are not for, it's not for Abba. You can start as a carpenter's son. But there was a time they stopped calling Jesus carpenter's son. Find out what happened that the word carpenter's son or the expression stopped jesus never said don't call me carpenter's son again he did something else and they say you are christos now the anointed and the bible says let this mind be in you listen i'm not teaching you to foil loss you know let me balance it there are people who when you hear this kind of teaching because you have you are determined to not even be spiritual in the first place when you hear these kinds of teachings it agrees with the desire for carnality and just a rat race of materialism that's not what i'm teaching i'm teaching you a healthy confidence that is derived from who you are in christ let them laugh at you i know that you may have limitation in speech but your products will do the correction of your english can i tell you don't fall for this this thing that society tries to bring bring you down what tribe are you what name are you you are not very beautiful you are not very handsome and people continue to kill themselves day and night i have learned and i teach a school of ministry students every year that everybody on earth is a summation of assets and liabilities but can i tell you one truth everything you acknowledge magnifies including the negative aspects of your life Philemon 1 and verse 6 it says that the communication of your faith might be effectual Philemon not Philippians Philemon 1 6 the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ there are some things I have received in my mind they can't be undone number one I cannot fail honestly it's not pride forgive me I have indoctrinated myself by the spirit if there are five people who will succeed on earth I will start praying for the remaining four because one position for sure has been taken number two I do not believe any power in existence can take my life before my time now he said is 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 a don't listen your destiny is your responsibility forget whatever has happened around your life number three i believe that i will not be i waved poverty goodbye and it waved me back when you wave somebody back you have agreed bye bye I believe in the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon my life. I say this with every sense of humility. You see. So the pressure to show you anointed is not there. The works will always speak. Listen. I know that I've taught you on several teachings here about the mind. But there's something I want to do to you tonight. Don't think because you come from a rich family it means your mindset has been corrected no your mindset just has an advantage to be adjusted fast but you can still have a depraved mindset even when you are in the palace 
an example Haman Haman wanted power so much his mindset taught him that you must kill everybody there are two ways to rise climb a ladder or cut the head of everybody higher than you Haman chose the other way another person's success is not why you are failing the sky is available for every champion please hear me my dear brothers and sisters there are many of you here who are about to start ministry don't be intimidated just do things right be inspired be challenged be provoked but don't let anybody intimidate you you will make mistakes you will learn on the job submit yourself to learning but as far as downplaying the grace of god upon your life is concerned don't let anybody do that if you are in ministry from whatever village or from anywhere god can use you and he can use you at a global scale business people listen rise out of the realm of subsistent thinking and begin to think globally are we together yeah. the law of mental transformation please sit down we have to hurry up let me jump to the third but i hope you got what i said in fact we should not just jump like that lay your hands on your head and in the name of jesus cause every negative thinking that has kept you down that is inconsistent with the word of god command it you this is the season where you must leave somebody is praying you are laying your hands on your head prophetically and you are declaring my mindset will be derived from the integrity of scripture everything the word of god has said i believe it may not manifest now but it surely will manifest hallelujah please sit down so when church is over if you happen to be trekking down the road and you see people passing suvs and all kinds of beautiful cars don't start insulting people out of anger and say all this mm -mm. just thank him because your mind is also driving are we together when you see a man of god highly anointed that god is using greatly don't just look for excuses to downplay what god is doing because you feel insecure no know that that dimension is also a possibility not just with your spirit alone but your mind when you see a prosperous person don't just get angry because it reminds you of the things you have not done be patient and know that if god did it for so 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 and so he will also do it for me hallelujah praise the name of the lord i've taught you here that the difference between you and anybody you admire the difference between you and anybody you admire is number one the quality of information that that person has access to the quality the first distinguisher of men is the quality of the information primarily spiritual information but then in addition all these other informations the laws number two the relationships that that person has to honor that heightened level of enlightenment because be fruitful also means be relational and then number three the kind and the level of grace that is at work in that person's life this is what separates people into cadence stop looking down on yourself let me preach to you stop looking down on yourself allow the naysayers talk but i want you to believe this is not the first time he's lifting people this is not the first time he's prospering people no this is not the first time he's making a man of god a prophet an apostle an evangelist out of ordinary people he's a master at it this is not the first time he's lifting a nobody to become a phenomenon this is not the first time is what he can do creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do Sila, think about what you just sang 
if he created the universe what is it about your destiny he cannot create you are not the first to come to abuja you are not the first to do ministry you are not the first to desire heightened levels of exploits it is within his power and in the name of jesus in this season by the quality of your mental transformation you are breaking to the left you are breaking to the right to the point that people will come when they hear that you are the one that god has made you steward over that organization and the rest they would doubt it till they see you when did saul become a prophet and you will tell them by the spirit of god he was a prophet many years ago you are only seeing the manifestation there is nothing god has told me that i cannot believe him for i learned this from god's servant bishop david Oyedepo. he said he can believe god for anything for those of you who think you have seen what this ministry has done we're only one step out of the cave you keep watching you will see the wonder walking power of the god of heaven at the risk of sounding arrogant i will say it again watch the wonder walking power the law of mental transformation gentlemen build your house here build a company here build the ministry with the holy spirit here what kind of man of god do you see yourself becoming as revealed to you by the spirit translate that reality here this is the womb of your destiny don't expect delivery when there is no pregnancy when there is no conception this is where the miracle happens the word of god is that seed but let it find a resting place in your mind and then give it time in as you cry you continue and one day your profiting will appear unto all and they who once laughed at you will now come to celebrate you and they will tell you the baby in the manger is now having a triumphant entry into jerusalem you will not always remain a baby in a manger ladies and gentlemen have i wasted your time tonight you can't imagine how much we have let's go to the next law are you learning this now do you know why i'm teaching you this and teaching you again because i want you to gain mastery the series is about gaining mastery so that with a surgeon's precision you can diagnose what is wrong with men around your life and and not if you want to help people spiritually you literally can create a routine from failure to success like a bridge and connect the person for the average person who has been in church for three four five years did you know that if they hand over a new believer to you and they say raise this person and follow that person up most believers don't know what to do at best they'll say are you filled with the holy ghost no go for prayer department meeting on tuesday and discuss the remaining there and most believers are at a loss as to how to mature and mentor and grow and build people and if you are a leader here you need to learn this aside from being a spiritual leader you will be a leader in business in politics you must know how to build people building people there is a skill there is a science to building people mental transformation bring a weak and defeated people like the men of david in the cave of adulam submit them to a visionary leader like david and he will not only change their names he will change their destinies few years later they will be called the mighty men of david the bible says one held a sword and fought standing in one position he killed 800 people and the sword would not leave his hand that's mastery hallelujah one of the blessings of mastery is that the more you become a master at anything fear goes fear is proof that you have not gained hold of certain laws spiritually and physically there are those who drive these heavy duty trucks and you would think because they are driving they should be afraid you will see a tiny man and he will hop you know into that truck and you will see him maneuver that truck with mastery and yet you see a learner struggling wondering whether the l in his car or her car has fallen and seeing people just shaking their heads and just passing while he's he's driving and he doesn't even know if he's moving or not
law number three the law of value and contribution pay attention was striving for mastery the law of value and contribution your relevance in life will always be a reflection your relevance in the eyes of your world will always be a reflection of your value and your contribution nobody will applaud you for doing nothing ladies and gentlemen your relevance as far as living in this cosmos is concerned whether in ministry in business in politics in whatever field of endeavor it will be a measure of your value and your contribution say value please say it again say value say contribution say value say contribution please look up when you are sick who do you need in your life a doctor is that true yeah when you want to build a house you need an architect am i right when you want to solve your security concerns you need a security agent until your life can match a problem and solve it there is no reason why people will consider you necessary in their lives don't downplay the law of value and contribution those in ministry especially most people think they are in ministry and people are placing a demand on them just because they are preaching jesus christ from a spiritual standpoint yes but from a standpoint of success from a standpoint of 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 um impact and exploits it is because you are making you are making a healthy contribution a man of god is part of the the systems put in place are we together now to help people in matters of faith and you are a contributor to nation building so you are not a nuisance to civilization let me tell you this if nobody is following you and placing a demand upon your life it is a report card to you that your value and your contribution is low or not there every service respectfully speaking i leave this place only on a few times but most times we we stay into the morning because after the service there are still other things you're doing counseling praying and doing some other things and no matter how you want to cut it the demand and the needs of the people is just overwhelming and you know that god has engraced you to solve that problem can i tell you this when all men seek for you it is because there's something you are carrying that has now been revealed look how dr miles describes it so excellently a mango tree does not have a signboard that brings people to it a mango tree does not have a worship team that charges the atmosphere a mango tree does not have ushers all the mango tree does is to begin to produce mangoes and remember when it is budding and doing all of these things people can pass but give it a few months people will stand there in response to the, the quality juicy fruits on that tree human beings who once neglect who once neglected that tree can now climb the tree look how people come early in the morning on a windy day to to pick the mangoes that are on the ground can i tell you there is an explanation to your loneliness i don't mean to play with your emotions but for as long as you believe that people will be indefinitely committed to you without providing any notable value and contribution you are dreaming think again nobody will follow you and invest into your life and destiny indefinitely except and unless at the instance of value ever increasing value and contribution men of god let's listen carefully it will take more than just evangelism to bring people make sure where they are coming to is prepared enough prepared through the quality of sound teaching prepare through the demonstration of the spirit to solve real life problems is someone learning now how many of you know that there were businesses that were in existence 10 years ago and they've been etched out because they did not develop themselves to match the current realities that are in today's world 
loneliness has an explanation when you are left alone it doesn't mean people hate you is that they are determined to solve their problems and they have learned by experience that you don't intend to be part of that solution so they will respectfully create a group and keep you there there are many of you who have maybe restrooms or you know rooms in especially in facilities like this and sometimes they can put a little um, card there out of service out of service means it has potential to be used but right now you cannot use it some of you that's what you have written is all over you as you move around i am out of service i can't contribute anything to your life there are men of god respectfully who are carrying that placard i want to serve jesus but i've not built my value the spiritual content of my value to be able to serve god's people with excellence and precision translating their desires into a christian experience that is fruitful how do you know you are making definite contributions because the demand will continue for as long as you remain valuable ladies and gentlemen have you seen some of you who watch not joe wild the, the 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 national geographic channel you find out that sometimes they show all of these videos of you know the animal kingdom and they come to the riverside to take water once they are full sometimes they ignore the river and the river never moves to look for them the river is confident enough to know that sooner or later they will come back man of god who told you there are too many men of god in nigeria you are just not anointed enough you've not just sat down to build capacity enough not from a competitive standpoint you have not branded your impact with such value and contribution can i tell you when you become valuable those who need you will find you man of god who told you or i said man of god businessman who told you there are enough malls in abuja oh abuja people they are when i hear people say there are too many people doing this i say no in every industry there are those who are at the highest levels are we together yeah last time i checked there are about 3.6 people i'm sure a lot more than that in abuja for instance let's use our city every one of these people at least even if they are fasting they still break Can I tell you this? Your value must be able to match the level of hunger and thirst that people have. You are not at liberty to just create any kind of value, refined or not. Uh -uh. Your value must be refined. If you are a man of God, it's time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit. Don't just rush and say, I have what to offer. You preach two weeks and you don't have anything to say again. The people may not fight you, but they, the demons attacking them are real. The confusion in their lives, is not a, they, are not, they are not faking these things. They will leave you and look for genuine solutions. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. Do you know that there are, there are businesses in this, in this nation look at banks for instance because of the role that they play in helping the economy of territories it does not matter what location they establish the bank you will always find people there because there is money inside respectfully i would always give this story of um answers i'm, I'm now not, not not to stir up i'm a preacher but then let me just during the answers you know people were sadly it's not it's not what i will encourage but people were you know jumping and boggling um storehouses do you know that there was no storehouse that said i am here there is rice inside me how people invented the skill to discern this discernment that looks very hard during that answers people found out and we didn't see where the ladder was but there were people at the top because some of the storehouses were hidden in places that you should not suspect that there's anything there bike men were following both sides of the roads carrying people and they were laughing 
people were helping one another even those who never knew themselves now let me ask you a question hold on imagine that your life becomes like that warehouse let me tell you they will find you anywhere you are don't tell me it's because i'm in lube don't tell me it's because i'm in another city no when your value is high carry genuine anointing and see what god does genuine grace to teach and build people doesn't matter whether you're in america when it has to do with spiritual things they sustain equal value everywhere apostle how can i know that people will come to my store show me what you are doing there do you not know that excellence is a language there are those who know how to speak it if I speak Yoruba now and I ask you to stand in Yoruba, those of you who are Yoruba people will stand. Those who are not Yoruba people will be at a loss. Excellence is a language. There are people who know how to speak it. Competence is a language. There are people who know how to speak it. Skill is a language. The law of value and contribution. Am I wasting your time tonight? Listen, I deliver you by the Spirit of God from a local champion mentality. At least I am better than this one. At least I am better than this one. No. Your clientele is the whole world. You are serving the power and the grace of God. If you are a prophet, don't sit down and be a prophet where they will suspect you and even those sent to hold your hand are afraid of you because of how number one you have not even gotten it clear you've not done your homework you are a man of god god grants you grace to be a revelator of scripture stay with scripture don't just say as the spirit leads submit yourself to to doctrine learn doctrine we must fight incompetence skill and contribution is the cure to this life of lack and whatever it is can i tell you when you become an active contributor to the lives and the destinies of people i give you this as a guarantee they will forgive many many limitations in your life to pursue the value that you have those days when we started there was only audio those of you who have followed the ministry for a long time God gave an instruction we didn't put any video except videos that were except videos that were maybe external ministrations and people would sit down and listen to the videos and sometimes they would listen to the, the sound quality you know may not be the best and yet they will enjoy it because of the value that they know they would find there it was Bishop David Oedeko who's who who said that when they started in Kaduna people were not coming and after praying and doing all of these things God gave him a few things and among the many things God told him is that when you bring quality life applicable teachings people will come and they will stay like a grass like the when animals come when they find a pasture they stay and learn I'm just using ministry as an example but it applies to every area you're a music minister don't sing as your relatives will clap for you no matter how you sound because they love you but you must be disciplined to tell yourself if i desire to sing his praises to the nations then i must be competent can i tell you this when you are pressing for competence don't let your tears deceive you you may cry but continue hmm. value and contribution i made up my mind that for as long as i live I will never stand before God's people to waste their time teaching nonsense and just wasting the precious time of God's people hear me some of you the reason why you've not been promoted take away all kinds of biases you say I've been there three years you've been there three years but you have not shown your superiors that you have built value enough for your promotion to be worthwhile A lot of Christians, yes, I know that there might be biases of religion and culture and all of that. But let me tell you sincerely, if you want to strive for mastery, please obtain grace from God to be valuable. Obtain grace from God to be valuable. Obtain grace from God to be a contributor to the lives and the destinies of people. Man of God, by the time God uses you to bring order 
to the life of a confused person salvation to an unsaved person transformation to an ignorant believer empowerment to a transformed believer and you release the people like the foxes of samson it is impossible for you to stand and remain lonely not in the face of value i once had a vision many years ago and in that vision i think i've shared it here maybe once at least I was there was a long queue of people and I was serving them bread and the bread the bread was filled with honey it was the honey was even dripping and I was not the one making the bread I was just receiving it from a machine and the machine never stopped making the bread the bread would come out with honey and somebody would taste of it and run and go and call his relatives and say come they are sharing something here and people, some of the people who took it will go back and join the queue. And for some reason, they were looking at me. They couldn't see the machine that was producing the bread and honey. It was mixing it already. I was just receiving it and giving them. When I woke up, I said, I found the key. I found the key. It will work in Abuja. It will work in London. It will work in US. It will work at the Caribbeans provided it is a platform for value it will work let me prophesy to you that in the name of Jesus where you have been neglected because of your inability to have structured your life to provide value in the name of Jesus men will look for you kings will look for you nobles will look for you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please sit down Jesus had the boldness. Jesus the humble. Jesus the meek and lowly. Had the audacity to make a very daring statement. Here's what he said. I am the way. I am that valuable. He said, I am the truth. And he said, I am the life. Then he went further to say, no man come to the father except by me. You want to rout the father? Use every other method. You will still come back here. Joseph said, let the king look for a man who is discreet and wise. It was a polite way of saying, king, I dare you. Where were all the people when I was in the prison? Search round and see if you will find them. Can I tell you this? When God wants to lift you back, he energizes you to work on your value and contribution. And when he sees that you have done your assignment, that finger will lift you in a way that nobody will be able to come within that vicinity. That's how God honors men. And that's what God is doing for someone. When it was time for God to lift Joseph, he shot the heavens over the sorcerers. And it was now Joseph's time to arise and shine. Please fight incompetence and do not just be a receiver, receiver, receiver. When I talk of being valuable, I'm not just talking of doing things. You can be valuable by being a blessing. Whether through words, whether through actions, whether through whatever it is. Those days when I used to take, you know, um, then it was not Uber, um, it was not Bolt, you know, you can just take a cab, just call it cab. There was a particular driver, that man was so neat. He used to drive me to the airport. I would save his number and call him. If he told me he was busy, I would tell him, please, just release whoever, I will pay you double for that amount. He was so neat. Very excellent driver, careful cautious trustworthy you could send him to go and pick someone for you now there were many drivers but i just loved and 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 we had meaningful discussions on our way to the to the airport when he found out i was a man of god true story the next time i came i noticed he was playing um i think it was don Muen or something he had gone to get a, a cd or something like, at least his own contribution Can I tell you this? Don't be angry and say people don't love me. Ask yourself, what am I bringing to the table? The table of greatness has many seats, but the rule is you don't sit down with an empty hand. You first submit what you are bringing. 
it is vetted by the intelligence of God if it will serve and bless people sufficiently with honor you are granted a seat there otherwise you will be driven back to go and work on yourself can I tell you I am sorry but I have to tell you this there are many believers who will still inherit shame in the days to come do you know why because many people keep claiming realms that they have not built value that can bring them into it with nobility and honor I will get there colorful and it's bright and they keep dancing and life says show me the value and the contribution that you have I made up my mind that in every area of my life where the Lord would have me serve whether in ministry in leadership corporate life whatever it is I would be valuable and competent that I will never stand before anybody across the globe and not be able to contribute something to their lives if I cannot contribute intellectually most likely if the person is not born again there are demons Even if you are free from demons, most likely you may not be very serious with the Holy Spirit. I'm still there again. You know what it means to be Alpha and Omega? Go and find out the implication of that name. You cannot do without me. You can run away from me, but you will meet a need that will still bring you back to me. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to make a covenant with your destiny tonight that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will stop being the one who just claps for people with jealousy and shame i'm ready to go and sit down for some of you you are complaining and say people don't like me forget all those things try stop trying to live a fake life getting a house that your value cannot maintain go back with nobility from where you are start building yourself buy books after service buy teachings go online instead of browsing around finding it out what is happening in people's lives who don't know you settle down and get materials man of god don't just move around telling people i'm a man of god invite me go and sit down lord what is the secret of fire what is the secret to an excelling life what is the secret to teaching with precision how do i understand scripture Number four, I've not taught this in this house because there is a separate series. My goodness, you will not want to miss that series. We're going to be dealing with a serious issue in the body of Christ. But it's, a, it's one of the laws of, of dominion that will help you if you want to strive for mastery. The law of authority. The law of authority. There is a separate series that is coming there. But this is very powerful most people do not realize that you succeed in life to the degree you are as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends you you are as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends you most people do not understand that authority plays a vital role in dominion and commanding mastery hallelujah in James chapter 4 and verse 7 Apostle James was teaching us the power of authority and here's what he said submit yourselves therefore to God that is the first key recognize that there is an authority from when you derive your your own power and then with that consciousness resist the devil and he says he will flee most people just go into resisting the devil and they do not understand that the level of your submission to authority dr mike mudok will say authority seeks to provide three things in the life of any individual number one provision number two protection number three promotion the assignment of authority in the life of a believer number one provision number two protection number three promotion the law of authority long reading Matthew chapter 8 I believe let me check it here Matthew chapter 8 when you read from verse 5 to 13 Jesus it was a story of the centurion the Bible says he saw a centurion, verse 6. Let's hurry up so that we can pray. 
the centurion came to him and said my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented seven jesus said unto him i will come i will respect your office and come and heal him let's see what happened verse 8 the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed what was the basis of his understanding for i am a man help me under authority stop there i am a man there is something i know about the power of authority that you are as powerful as the authority that backs you can i tell you when god sent moses moses said uh -uh, it will take more than skill to bring deliverance who shall i tell pharaoh has sent me daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 b here's what the bible says but the people that do know their god the government that has sent them they shall be strong and shall do exploits can i tell you this life and destiny must ask you this one question who sent you in preparing my notes for this discussion tonight i just thought about how many jobs we have in nigeria and how that there are some jobs because of the sensitive nature of the jobs they will demand that before they consider you you have to bring a reference letter am i right on that you bring a reference letter from a very noble personality they believe that no one would just take his reputation on you for nothing they would ask you questions so they will say bring a letter from a senator a president whatever a director or somebody a civil servant at a particular grade level can i tell you this it is dangerous to try to explore this realm of greatness alone the authority that backs you both physically and spiritually matters a dear man of god in this nation when he was moving to go and start ministry he went to meet another senior man of God, a father of faith in this nation. And he said, what one advice would you give me as I'm going now? And according to him, the man of God spoke to him in Yoruba. And he said, here is my advice. Never fight alone. You will be defeated. You are as powerful as the authority that sends you. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. Are you conscious of the authority that you are under? What gives us the audacity to gather people like this? Week in, week out. We had a, a powerful time in Zaria over the weekend. You know, wonderful time of teaching, miracle service. And it was such a phenomenal time. What gives this audacity? The authority. When Jesus walked upon the earth, notice, Jesus never called himself Father. Go and read your Bible. Jesus never. They called him Father. They attested to the fact that he was one with. He said, I am the Father, I am one. But he never called himself Father. For as long as he was on earth, he acknowledged that there was Abba, one above him. The law of authority. Many believers are not able to succeed because they do not understand the power of authority. Can I tell you? I hate to be a bearer of bad news but let me tell you if you just depend on the quality of your spiritual life alone to advance you your pace may be slow there are times you would need to outsource the uh, the covenant advantage that comes with authority and make tremendous progress in your life while you grow authority is powerful when god calls men as individuals when God calls ministries there are covenants that he has with them that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen and you can tap into that covenant there are ministries that carry the covenant of wealth and prosperity you will see people come to that ministry even before they know anything about finances they start prospering because of honor to authority there are ministries that are prophetic for instance you would see a businessman would come into the ministry looking for business solution but in addition to that solution they will also carry that grace because it's an advantage every ministry 
and every genuine servant of God. In fact, it extends to every leader that God calls. Please hear me. There are covenants and these covenants can become a platform. Now it can be idolized. Unfortunately, we were suffering that now in Africa. But within the boundary of scripture, if you understand the advantage that authority provides, your life will be a sign and a wonder. When it was time for David to go and fight Goliath, read your Bible. When Saul heard about him, he looked at him. There were certain questions that Saul asked. Among them, whose son are you? What tribe are you? Not, not who trained you in the wilderness. I want to know what covenant you are going to that battleground with. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath had their own gods that they worshipped, even as a warrior. But David came and announced the basis of his victory. He says, you come to me with your spheres and your bows, but I come to you in the name, the name of the God of heaven, whom you have, the God of Israel, whom you have defied. Can I tell you this? There are times your skill can fail, but the, the covenant of the authority you are under can speak to you and speak for you. It is true. The law of authority. Let's go to the next one. I'm just discussing all the laws or some of the many laws of the spirit that you must be able to know and study in depth if it is mastery that you want to gain. Next, the law of faith. I've done an extensive teaching on this. John 11 and verse 40. I tell you, someone's life is changing this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. John 11, 40. Jesus saith to her, saith I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? So there is a relationship between believing God and seeing his glory. I have taught extensively on faith here. Mark 11, 22 to 24. Jesus himself is teaching us a lesson on faith. And he says, have faith in God. Papa Hagen will say, have the faith of God. 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith. 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Say faith. faith. One more time, say faith. faith. A combination of of your conviction and your persuasion about God alongside your obedience your obedience faith in one word is obedience obedience to the scriptural demands that commit God over the affairs of your life not just obedience to anything obedience to the scriptural demands for everything you want God to do in your life there are scriptural demands faith becomes a definition the name given to your complying with the scriptural demands that commit god apostle i want to prosper there is a scriptural demand your assignment is to obtain grace to walk in keeping with that demand apostle i want to excel in life there is a scriptural demand please look up four times in scripture like you have learned here the bible says the just shall live by faith there are no guarantees in life precious people of god nobody will give you a guarantee anywhere your guarantee is your faith this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith man of god nobody is going to give you a guarantee that the next 10 20 years you will still be relevant in ministry nobody will give you a guarantee that you will still be alive by next week nobody will give you a guarantee that you will still be at the cutting edge of revival and the program of god it takes faith your conviction but i know whom i have believed the bible says and i am persuaded that he is able if i ask you what makes you believe that 2022 will still be a victorious year for you don't tell me my uncle just became a senator that's not a very accurate answer your faith 
I believe that Jesus Christ is still alive. And for as long as he's alive, for as long as his word remains true, then I remain victorious. Someone shout and say, I am victorious. Let the devil hear you. I am victorious. Ready for the next? I hope you understand what I'm giving you now. The law of relationships. This is the next. The law of relationships. Goodness. The law of relationships. I'm just touching on it. Remember I taught you on this. That relationships matter in your life. We are gaining mastery. So that if somebody tells you things are not working in my life. In your mind, if you want to help that person, you don't just say let's pray. You can know what is wrong. Apostle, I'm a great man. But there's nobody somewhere to hear me. You know that this person is lacking of relationships relationships are very powerful i taught you from genesis 12 and genesis 13 remember the story of abraham and lot the bible says god called abraham he called him alone and all his servants then the bible says and lot went with him by the time we get to chapter 13 we see that everything abraham had lot also had to the point that you will not even know who god called and who followed again and then lot made a mistake a costly mistake he separated himself from Abraham I've taught you in this house that there are three levels and three kinds of relationships there are general relationships to be friendly and to be nice and kind and warm to everybody around you regardless who regardless status number two there are seasonal relationships and that the key to receiving from seasonal relationships is discernment because those relationships are not there forever you have to discern them and maximize the moment while they are there and then number three there are covenant or destiny relationships these are relationships you must protect at all costs because a part of your success and your results is connected to it the moment lot separated himself from abraham the next thing we find is a gradual decline until he found himself in the middle of sodom it still took abraham to negotiate for him and still send angels to come and help him and rescue him and then abraham many times he helped that his cousin called lot prodigal son he was successful only because he was in relationship with his father the moment he cut away from that relationship lack and want started until he found himself with peaks how about the believer we only excel based on our relationship with jesus and then our relationship with his spirit the basis for our excelling in life is the spirit of god relationships are powerful there are laws to relationships one of it is friendliness i've taught you this forbearance all men are men the best of any man is still a man the person you like the most who annoy you one day is not new learn it you have to factor it I taught you that one of the major things you need to maintain relationships is forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness means to pardon a default forbearance means to create an accommodation for that lapse because it will happen again can I tell you some of the people God will use to lift and help you most in life some of them may sustain things in your life you want to drive them for but let me tell you sincerely if you can understand how relationships work you will protect certain relationships until they deliver to you the prophecy attached to them for instance maybe you're a man of god maybe there is a man of god anointed and assigned to help you but you don't like the man because of the way he speaks or because of temper or because of other limitations your ability to endure those limitations will make way for you to receive of the grace that is in that person everybody say relationships you are a relationship away to the next level of your life i've taught you extensively on this and that includes even the ministry of destiny helpers remember divine connectors men of influence gifted people burden bearers listen 
I want you to go back. I gave you an assignment that time. I know many of you didn't do it. God is giving you another chance. Go and write a list of some of the most valuable relationships in your life and begin to invest in them consciously. The top 10 relationships in your life that reflect, um, the, it's like those relationships are a gateway you can't put everybody in your life in the same category and invest the same level of time energy and effort that is not wise it has nothing to do with hating or loving there are relationships that are priceless in your life and if and when you find those relationships throw away your ego and don't be ashamed to invest your time and energy because the returns from those relationships will translate into an excelling life hallelujah are we together there are sacrifices that I've made in my life, even in ministry. There are places I've gone to minister. It was not part of the original schedule. But the sacrifice of maintaining relationships, maybe with the fathers and the people there, I've had to bend over backwards, sometimes even to the detriment of my health. It, was a, 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 it may not have been the best sacrifice, but can I tell you the truth? I know that the excellency of the, the, kind of, the kind of relationship that will be built from that sacrifice will be worth the while. There are many of you, there is nobody who is special in your life. Nobody is worth your commitment. There is nobody who can make you wake up in the night to answer their call or pray for them. You believe you are a disciplinarian. I sleep by 12 midnight. And not even Jesus Christ wakes me. If you continue like that, you will not go far. Can I tell you, when it has to do with the world of men, there are positive compromises. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I left you with a thought when we discussed on relationship. Let me bring it to you again. Is there anyone in your life today who sees you to be so valuable and useful to them that if you call for help, of any sort if it is within their power they will stand up without question and come to you if you don't have at least one of such kind of person in your life i assure you by god you are sitting on a time bomb no matter how anointed no matter how enlightened in this world who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters is there somebody who can cry with you when you are crying not that you beg the person to cry with you he came on his own volition to say i love you too much your pain is my pain great leaders will tell you that part of the things that make them excel is that they may not have money but they have the wealth of men genuine and sincere men i'll tell you a little story now i'm sure he's going to be embarrassed about um pastor here I remember one time I was going to go and preach and it was a huge sacrifice I was to stop by at Enugu just do two three hours or so preach and then head to connect with another conference in Port Harcourt. it was so inconveniencing but then I needed to push through because of the honor that I had for that man of God and that father of faith and when I remember when I got in I was you know so exhausted and uh, please don't, don't feel embarrassed this dear man you see when i tell you he's a good man he really is a good man put together his team it was even his team that went and picked me from the airport i just went to rest a bit and as i was preaching he came for the program when i finished this man was with me all around this is for those of you who know house on the rock very well respectfully speaking this is one of the men who has raised many of the leaders in house on the rock profound humility hallelujah i was so humbled and broken that day i didn't know how to tell him pastor please your boys are here you go back and he escorted me right to the base of the aircraft to leave can i tell you this i have learned by experience not everybody thinks you are a big deal so when you find people who think you are that important don't trivialize them because it is not everybody who thinks you are that special or deserving of honor that much let me give you a kind advice when you find people in your life who are sincerely interested in your life and your well-being and love you sincerely with no strings attached let me tell you don't be ashamed to invest in those relationships
Are we learning? There are some people who may not have money to give you man of God, but you can be sure that every time you cry, they are there. How do you throw such people out of your life? When Jesus Christ was on his way to go and die, I taught you during Easter, where was the woman with the issue of blood who cried? Where was the man at the, the entrance of Jericho, the blind man? You thought all these people haven't received from Jesus. Are you learning that it's not enough to be valuable? As powerful as it was, Jesus gave them value. But now, when he was headed for the cross, they all left him. But there was a stranger who supposedly appeared from nowhere. Simon of Cyrene. He said, I will not let you cry. I cannot die for the world, but I can help the one who can die. Back then in Zaria, I don't watch a lot of movies, unfortunately. I don't have the time. But I did a teaching in, in Zaria then, I remember. And I love this movie called Lord of the Rings. I think it seems to be one of my best movies. Simply because... Um, I, I just love anything that shows the laws of life in place right and there was a gentleman the ring bearer the, there was you won't believe that all my love for that film is because of one scene <laughs> so don't think I've never been able to watch it from start to finish so don't even think that I know what I'm saying <laughs> praise God are we together but the one scene that the ring bearer was on his way to go and do his due diligence based on prophecy and he had this faithful friend and the friend made one statement called Sam the friend said I may not be able to carry the ring but I can carry you ah when I saw that one I said this is it this is a revelation that is scriptural question please look up there are burdens that you have in your life, dear leader, dear man of God, are there people who can carry you while you carry that burden? Woe betides a man who is left alone carrying the burden of your vision with people who are in your life just to pray on your gifts and go back. They pray on your revelation, pray on your anointing, and once they have everything, question, are there people in your life who if you don't provide any value for they will still stay because they will tell you i'm not here for it i am here for you may god make you such a person Amen. then may god bring such people to your life Amen. the law of relationships my life has changed because of relationships God has helped me in ministry because of relationships. Every facet of my life has received an upward turn because of relationships. I remind you again, be fruitful means be relational. There is no fruitfulness without relationships. No matter what you have and what you are, you need relationships. You must obtain grace from God to learn relationships. Apostle, all I need in my life is just God. You are right, but in the cosmos, you are wrong. Hallelujah. Relationships. Let me give you a few more and we wrap up. Are you learning something tonight? The next law that will help you walk in dominion and will help you produce mastery in your life is the law of honor mm. this is a jackpot i can spend one week teaching on this i understand it believe me i'm just touching these things i'm not going into in-depth detail i've done teachings on them the law of honor very powerful spiritual principle honor being the discerning the celebrating and even the rewarding of men because of their value and their uniqueness. The law of honor is powerful. Let me submit to you that honor can open sometimes more doors for you even than your skill. There are only three reasons why, one reason really, 
separated into three dimensions why people fail in life only one reason dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles that is the only reason why people fail dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles i've taught you here in koinonia that honor is the key for access every time a door closes over you it was dishonor that closed that door especially if it was once opened any door i assure you by god that once opened over your life and is now closed dishonor closed it business doors especially doors of help and support there are many men of god who may never be allowed to minister in certain circles again because even though they were anointed and gifted dishonor shut that door towards them many of you at one point or the other you've had unusual access into the lives of people especially great and noble people spiritually politically and otherwise but dishonor close that door what is dishonor the trivializing the demeaning the downplaying of people's achievements people's uniqueness and people's value when you trivialize when you demean when you downplay people there are severe life-threatening consequences I've taught you to practice honor honor is a powerful spiritual principle that will help you will lift you will bless you I am a beneficiary of the law of honor there are circles that ordinarily outside of the grace of God upon my life I should never be in those circles or enjoy those privileges not at this level of my life moving at the natural human pace but honor is an accelerator it can fast track your destiny honor can bring you into the achievement of your 10 years later now is someone learning don't live a life and say it's only God that I know and dishonor everybody no there are people in this Abuja there are people in this nation it is within their power to lift and bless and help but all the people around them who are in need of that help have perpetually communicated dishonor to the point that there are even parents that will they, are, they wrote their will to house helps and other people not their biological children because of the level of dishonor please say in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to practice honor honor is powerful there are people who never greet anyone once the person is not rich or wealthy you don't greet them mm -hmm, let me look for the rich people that's parasitism not honor if it is genuine honor it must be for all men because you see the person who is already made you've seen their end but the person who is rising you don't know how far they will rise some of you after this service you may need to call your loved ones or call people around who have perceived that you have communicated dishonor perpetually and let them know that you love them and you honor them there are men of God who will come and mount another man of God's pulpit and rubbish the ministry, rubbish what they are doing, downplay the work of the man and share the grace. If you are that man of God, will you invite any other person like that to come on your pulpit? It is because of this fear of dishonor sometimes that men of God seem overprotective with their pulpit. Because they love the sheep so much, they don't want to bring people who sell a narrative that dishonor is marketable practice honor honor children honor your subordinates honor your contemporaries honor your superiors honor all men honor kings and you will watch your life keep shining shining as a man of God you see for those in ministry let me tell you preaching is not the only thing that makes ministry ministry oh. being anointed is not even the only thing that makes ministry ministry wait for part three Part three is the power of systems and structures. 
I'm going to be sharing with you something powerful when we get to part three. The power of systems and structures. You cannot gain mastery if you do not understand systems and structures. Tonight we're just dealing with the laws that make for dominion. The law of honor. Two more and then we'll pray. The law of favor is the next one. You know this. <laughs> the law of favor. First Samuel 16, 20 to 22. First Samuel 16, 20 to 22. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son to Saul. We're reading to 22, 21. And David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. Last verse, 22. And Saul sent to Jesse saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he had found favor in my sight. Favor is the number one reason people prosper. I recommend to you my teaching this grace called favor. Listen to it. Listen to it again and again. I, I honestly submit to you, dear people of God, I don't know how people survive without the favor of God. You will never be able to rise in today's world without favor. What is favor? When God anoints people to participate in your success, when they provide the leverage of their credibility, their resources to help you rise. Listen to my teachings on favor. Believers, your life will be difficult and hard if you do not find favor. And as it is, you've heard me lovingly correct, just add this as a correction for as many who would care to know. There are many people who have taught that favor is unmerited access. That may be right, but not entirely right. Favor is very merited. There are dimensions of favor. The saving grace is what is unmerited. But believe me, favor is merited. You can initiate favor. Favor is a reaction. There is something you can do that will equal to favor. Proverbs 13, 15. The Bible says, good understanding procured favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. Hardship has an explanation. There are many men of God who love Jesus with all their hearts. Anointed and preachers of righteousness. But this favor factor, most do not have. There are families that do not have it. Some of you, you are seated here. The limitation, there are books within your spirit. There are visions that you have had. But to get to the nations, there's no favor. I will always tell people, it's easy to look at the Joshua Selmans and those who God has seemed to, by his mercy and grace, bring to the lamblight and believe that these are the faces. There are many people even greater than us. But simply because they've not tapped into the other dimensions of the kingdom that gives them that visibility. Favor is powerful. Ask me. Favor is powerful. I've told you that who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Minis listen, listen. Ministers of the gospel, I assure you by God and with every sense of respect and regard, you're not going to run ministry just based on tithes and offerings. I assure you by God. One day you will collapse. Any man of God who wants to walk in integrity knows I'm not lying. Except you want to manipulate God's people. But if you want to do ministry with the dignity of kingdom integrity, you will need favor. You will need favor. I believe in the favor of God. I thank God that I learned it I continue to learn the laws of favor. In addition to my loving Jesus and pressing into the things of the Spirit, serving the nations with this grace for revival and power, I know that I need the favor of God. Everybody say favor. Please, in one minute, as we prepare to take the last one, just lay your hands on your head again and say, Father, let favor begin to work for me. Pray from your heart. 
believe me you need it man of god you may be watching online you need it businessman you need it there are families here it is this favor factor that you have not seen in your life spiritually you are doing well god has helped you and shown you mercy but you need favor hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me give you the last one and then we'll wrap up for tonight the last law is the law of spiritual empowerment the law of spiritual empowerment i've given you about nine these are the laws that you engage if you want to gain mastery and dominion in life we started by discussing in part one and even today that life and living is spiritual that means you need more than intellectual empowerment you need an empowerment from heaven jesus himself he said the spirit of the lord the messianic prophecy it was for him in luke chapter 4 when he came he began to reiterate that same statement the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed ordained empowered me to preach the gospel to the poor sent me to heal the brokenhearted all of these things happen based on empowerment can i tell you there are certain things that cannot be done by the strength of the flesh it will take supernatural empowerment and i've done teachings on this believe us some of you have not opened up your heart for empowerment because you have been taught that empowerment is for men of god those in ministry apostles prophets those who will heal the sick those who will deal with demons and since i am dealing with files or i am dealing with politics i don't need empowerment no sir you do you do you do you need empowerment it takes empowerment to rise it takes empowerment to ward off the forces of darkness that come to fight the purposes of God in your life. Man of God, it takes empowerment to allow that which God has given you go to the nations unhindered. I believe in spiritual empowerment. I have taught it all the days of my ministerial life. This is what I represent among many other things to the body of Christ. The possibility that men can be empowered and that their lives can become an unending, unending manifestation of the power of God. I have seen what the anointing can do. I have seen what the power of God can do. You are truly a blessing when you are empowered. You came here tonight desiring to learn, desiring to grow. You came here tonight for someone because you've been asking questions in your life. Lord, I love you and I desire to know you. But is there a way I can have a consolation to my Christian experience? For someone, you came here tonight wondering, why do I enjoy victory and yet my victory is short-lived? why do i enjoy results and then as soon as i'm celebrating i go back again you are in need of mastery your results are random you need to get to a point where you begin to walk in an uncanny level of mastery he says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except and unless he strives lawfully the law the sacrifice of total surrender the law of mental transformation the law of value and contribution the law of authority and submission the law of faith the law of relationships the law of honor the law of favor the law of spiritual empowerment there may be a few other laws that i'll be teaching you but i give you a guarantee hold these laws like like keys and you can move through life opening door after door layer of success and victory after another this is what god desires for us to do and remember i have told you that your results matter for the kingdom because it is in your excelling that the name of the lord is glorified and god wants every one of us to excel is someone ready to pray tonight 
you're going to pray and ask the Lord for grace. Lord, I am tired of shadow boxing my Christian experience. I'm tired of, I'm tired of guessing trial and error. Now I've been born again, saved for 10, 20 years, but I, I have not been able to put together the spiritual principles that help me reveal and glorify you. Now you have taught me, I obtain grace. Someone pray, lift your voice in one minute and pray. For just a minute or two, please make sure you focus on Jesus and pray. Of all these spiritual principles and these laws that I've taught you, you know the ones that are not yet at work in your life. Obtain grace from God. For some of you, you are, you are neglecting the law of relationships. For some of you, you have not accessed the favor of God. For some of you, dishonor has closed doors for you. For some of you, you have not even laid down everything. There is no surrender in your life. For some of you, value and contribution. You have entertained mediocrity in your life, in ministry, in business, in career. It's time to come up here. Someone is praying. One more minute. Are you crying to God? It's time, oh God, to blow me like a shofar to the nations prepare me I strive for mastery hallelujah listen one of the advantages of being a master or striving for mastery is that you redeem time every time you fail an exam they either dismiss you from that system or you recycle time again is that true sometimes that time can be as much as one year lack of mastery will make a journey of 40 days to become 40 years someone is praying one last prayer father let my mastery of these spiritual laws bring efficiency to my spiritual life go ahead and pray in that which you have called me to do those who have gone ahead of us have shown us that these are the keys in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for you as we wrap up tonight's service father I thank you for the privilege again that you have granted unto us to bring your word many within this place and so many more following and connecting from their homes you have spoken to us tonight on these spiritual laws these are the laws that help men to gain mastery in life and destiny i pray in the name of jesus that for every one person here who is yet to gain and lay hold of these spiritual principles the grace to do so is released upon you yeah. in the name of jesus yeah. i pray for the diligence to understand and master these laws and that as you engage them your life will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder yeah. where you have been down may these laws lift you up yeah. in the name of jesus and where you have not been able to bear much fruit that brings glory to the name of the Lord, may these laws accelerate your results. In the name of Jesus. Can I tell you this? Please look up. For many of you, I submit to you, and I'm saying this primarily to the house here, but it extends to as many who will be interested. If I were you, I would shut down on many, many nonsense I'm trying to learn as far as becoming successful is concerned and deal with these things first pick them one by one for some of you god has brought acceleration he has reduced your shadow boxing of 10 20 years 
go back and look at them I've been trying to make ministry work I've been trying to make my destiny work ah this is it Holy Spirit open my eyes the more all of these laws I've taught them in details listen to them one by one and learn them and you will come and stand here week after week testifying to the point that you will even think will be angry with you because your face is too frequent because there will be no week without a notable testimony in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and give him thanks for tonight's service hallelujah part three we're going to discuss I'll be teaching you next week please don't miss it the power of systems and structures striving for mastery part three will be the power of systems and structures many of you will be learning something that will transform your life forever please keep standing let me quickly make the altar call and then we'll wrap up we will never fail to make an altar call here for as long as God grants us the privilege to gather may I play with us to please minimize movement just for a minute and we'll be done I know that most people may try to rush so that they get vehicles and the rest just be patient let's honor all who need to make a decision every time God gathers us like this it is because there is someone who comes in the midst of God's people who needs Jesus and I believe tonight is no different there's someone you are here you are saying apostle I need Jesus in my life and for another you are saying apostle I remember giving my heart to Jesus but I need restoration if you belong to any of these categories inside all the overflows outside May I request that you come and stand here very quickly. We have just one minute for you. Please boldly leave your seat and come. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. I have decided to follow Jesus. Keep coming. I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turn please if you are joining them hurry up hurry up so that we pray for you we love you Jesus brought you here to give you a new beginning come come apostle I'm not sure if I'm saved can I join them absolutely you're most welcome there is something called the assurance of salvation you can know that you know that if the trumpet sounds today for you it will be that your decision has given you the authorization to be with Jesus even forever God bless you thank you so much for those of you who are in front and then all the overflows and for those who are following uh, by way of television you can make this decision right now right where you are Jesus is with you please may I request those in front can you lift your right hand high above your head and say this prayer after me let it be from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus as my savior i receive jesus as my lord i receive jesus as my king the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god saved amen let me pray for you father thank you for these precious people the bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have come because they believe in you by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i pray that my god gives you a new beginning from tonight the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life you walk in newness of life and you walk in righteousness you go from glory to glory and from grace to grace for in Jesus name I pray amen and amen God bless you please may I request just for a moment that you move to my right which is your left there will be a few counselors who will just have a word with you very briefly and then you'll be back to your seat God bless you darling thank you hallelujah 
Let's celebrate them as they go. Thank you. Hallelujah. May this week be full of divine surprises for you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.